Welcome everyone to this episode of Raise Your Hand Live, a monthly talk show featuring education change makers. I am your host, Mohamed Sidibe. In a month's time, the UK and Kenya will host the Global Education Summit that aims to raise at least 5 billion for GPE to help transform education in over 90 countries and territories. The stakes are higher than ever and business as usual is insufficient. We need transformative action to tackle our greatest challenges while improving equity and inclusion in all parts of the world. And we need to act in partnership to achieve lasting change. This is why I am delighted to be joined by two firm believers in the power of education, youth and partnership to discuss how we can make progress working together where less collaborative efforts might fail. Please join me in welcoming Her Excellency Yuta Okpilenian, European Commissioner for International Partnership, and my dear friend Jayatma Wikagamanayake, UN Secretary General Envoy on Youth. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having us. GPE is the largest global fund solely dedicated to transforming education in lower income countries and is a unique multi-stakeholder partnership. Its strength lies in its inclusive and representative model. At country level, GPE harnesses its funding and convening power to put countries in the lead, build national capacity and overcome fragmentation to bring about lasting change at scale. My first question is for the commissioner. In our experience, what factors drive successful partnership and how can GPE new strategies set it up for more success? First, I want to thank for this opportunity to have this conversation with you today. And um, you probably know that I'm, I'm teacher by profession. So I really believe in the power of education to transform lives and, and societies. I'm coming from Finland and I can tell you very honestly that the country I know best wouldn't be so you know, competitive as it is today without education and without access to education. So as a European Commissioner for International Partnerships, I really put education at the heart of the global recovery. Um, why the European Union is supporting GPE and how I see the role of the GPE. Of course, from the uh, you know, education perspective, GPE is a great partner for the European Union. And the reason is that we really share the same priorities. For instance, girls' education to achieve gender equality and inclusive societies very very important priority for both of us quality learning with emphasis uh, on well-trained teachers and school leadership i think this is uh, something we really need to pay attention especially in africa where it, there is a huge need for new teachers uh, but also basic education and vocational education and, and training, which is uh, particularly transformative for, for young people. So I just wanted to highlight that EU is and remain a strong partner of the, uh, uh, for, for the uh, GPE. Thank you very much uh, for your response, Juta. I mean, like everyone knows about the Finnish model. The whole world talks about the Finnish model. Uh, and, and I talk about the Finnish model whenever and I'm the in Finnish Finland. teachers. <laughs> exactly. Especially. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and that's, and that's what makes it, you know, like look at where Finland came from to where Finland is right now. It is, you know, it's quite impressive. There are two countries oftentimes when you look at how education has transformed their systems uh, and like, you know, like for the better, you know, you often think of Finland and then you think of um, South Korea. And it's, it's quite impressive um, how they invested in education, the role of teachers in transforming uh, these, um, these two different countries. Now, Jack, my, my next question is for you. The disruption of education by COVID-19 has greatly impacted the most marginalized children and young people. How can we achieve this transformational change needed to protect 
pass gains and accelerate progress. Thank you, Mohammed. Um, young people, as you said, especially the most marginalized, um, didn't really get marginalized or vulnerable only because of the COVID-19 pandemic, right? There are so many groups of young people who were already facing so many disproportionate challenges when it came to accessing education. So young women and girls, young people living with disabilities, young indigenous people, LGBTIQ youth, young refugees, um, young people living in conflict and humanitarian settings, uh, for an example, have incredible challenges in accessing education. Speaking to you from my home country, Sri Lanka today, I am actually reminded of my childhood and um, my uh, school education, completely school education was done when my country was going through an armed conflict. Um, so the, the issue of young people's challenges when it comes to accessing quality education, and your question really rings very close to my own lived experience. Um, because young people's access to education was already challenged before the pandemic, I think the lockdown measures and the school closures really uh, compacted on those existing challenges. We heard that 1.6 billion children and young people lost access to education during the peak of the pandemic. Um, and it continues to affect more than 300 million learners still today, one year after the pandemic. And we know that this disproportionately affects women and girls, for an example, girls who go through increased gender-based violence, teenage pregnancies, child marriages, increased domestic chores, who do not have access to education or virtual learning, for an example, like some other young people would do in um, some other parts of the world. So uh, young people today, therefore, are experiencing these multidimensional, multifaceted challenges all coming at them at once. So they cannot wait for incremental change. You know, we can't wait for progress that is done over decades. We need transformational change. And this transformation must be systemic, it must be long term, and it must ultimately lead to disrupting the status quo. So I think we need to include the people who are most left behind, including young people, as full fledged partners, not only as beneficiaries. So that means education solutions to be co created and co implemented with young people. For me, transformation is not only about what we do, but also how we do it, which brings me to my second point. To achieve transformational change, we need accountability. So today, world leaders are comfortable talking about young people's role and education, uh, but to move beyond that and to move beyond the platitudes towards action, we need dedicated resources. So education is not something nice that we can do for young people, but education is a fundamental human right and a public responsibility and we are accountable to young people everywhere to make sure they have access to those basic rights it's funny you know when you like education really it is it's not something nice and um, jayakma you and i've lived uh, in countries that have experienced uh, long protracted civil war uh, and trying to gain it you know <laughs> go to school during a, a civil war is this is very difficult even i was unable to go to school during the civil war um in sierra leone but you, you are right also in the sense like we're like young people are now faced with this uh, multifaceted um, challenges. So we cannot, the, 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 the name of the game usually to say it's like progress takes time, progress is linear, but it's hard for, for, for people to be patient for this, you know, business as usual progress, incremental, you know, incremental um, uh, progress when, you know, young people are being attacked um, for different issues <laughs> from all, all, all angle. And it makes things very difficult for our generation. I mean, since March of 20, 2020, we've, we've all experienced a shared vulnerability to global crisis. Uh, and with uh, the understanding that a health emergency is inevitably affected by a change in climate, which in turn is undermined by the learning crisis, which is in part driven by deep inequalities. Now, 2021 uh, presents opportunities for leaders to step up and break uh, this cycle be it as um, the recent G7 um, summit or GP's upcoming Global Education Summit or the Climate Change Conference COP26 in November. I mean, these are all key moments for the world to show uh, it has taken the global learning crisis seriously and that breaking silos and working across sectors indeed possible 
started with a fully funded um, GPE. My next question again is for you, Jayatma. Uh, the Youth-Led GPE Futures Festival discussed the far-reaching impact of COVID-19, including lost learning and increased poverty and um, the need for government to prioritize investing in education systems. How does increased financing for education uh, help to build resilience to future crisis and what are the areas young people have identified as priorities for investment? There's no doubt that sustained investments in inclusive mm -hmm. and future-proof quality education mm -hmm. is key to preventing a lost generation of bright, motivated young people locked out of realizing their true potential. It is also the smartest investment for long-term sustainable development. So young people are so clear Then we heard them at the GPE Futures Festival, which was youth-led event itself. Uh, for an example, investing education, they said, is investing in their future. Um, they did bring to the surface many underlying root causes uh, that in their communities that they find it hard to access education. And I just highlight maybe five of those key messages that they brought to that event, which I think will be helpful for our conversation today. The first point that I heard from the young people at the Futures Festival is that access to safe and inclusive education for all girls and all genders increases gender equality across countries, across communities. The second point that was very clear is a gender responsive curriculum and trained teachers of all genders prepares them for the realities of the world. The third point was that education has become virtual in every aspect. Everyone is talking about Zoom schooling or online learning, but young people are lacking access to these digital tools. There is a digital divide and there's a digital gender divide. So digital accessibility, digital infrastructure and digital skills are critical for young people to access education, but also to use that education then to secure decent jobs for their future. The fourth message, which was loud and clear, was that without funding from governments, without funding from the big players, from the international community, inequalities will remain a part of their daily lives. So they wanted to see um, structural and sustained change in the way that governments and the global community fund or sustainably, sustainably fund education. Lastly, the, the point that was very clear is that every young person sees education as a human right and something that they should all have access to, no matter what their class, gender identity, sexuality, ab ability, or where they live in um, the world. And, and there was this quote that I captured, which said, there can be no sustainable development if education is ruled out. Funding education through GPE's replenishment will change our lives forever. And you must raise your hand now. This is what they said, uh, told us during the GPE live event. Thank you, Jayatma. Uh, and um, um, Yuta, please feel free to join in whenever to, to comment uh, on anything Jayatma have said. Please feel free to, 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 to join. I want to make this as conversational um, as, 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 as possible. But like Jayatma, you, you are right. Like education is a human right. Um, we cannot say, um, we cannot protect the, the, the future um, of children, of young people, if we do not provide them with the quality education um, that, that, that they all need. And, and I mean, far too often we, we admire the, 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 the Finnish model, Finnish teachers, um, the Korean model. I, I get it, like it's not one size fit all, of course, um, but these... <clears throat> changes that we see in these countries is like increase in this you know like the 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 the, the, the removal from poverty to, to to being where they are right now is because they invested systematically and aggressively in their educational systems and their teachers which in turn has allowed these two countries to rip the reward uh, that they're now um uh ripping now my, my next question is for yuta um we know education has positive ripple effect across all social uh, uh, sectors. Uh, despite this, global education continues to be the orphan of the, the, the aid sector. How can we ensure that G7 lead, uh, leaders will drive a tangible step change and translate political will into financial commitments, especially at the Global Education Summit? 
That's a very good question and important question. It's true that the pandemic has uh, wiped out much of the progress achieved over the past decade. But the um, learning crisis, which like Jamata uh, very well described it, it has existed already before COVID. So it's not nothing new. It has been existing for a longer time. Uh, but it's now deepened by inequalities, digital divide, by uh, psychological and, and mental issues. So of course, there are new challenges and, and the situation is much worse uh, than it was before the uh, COVID-19 hit. Um, I fully agree that uh, there cannot be another loss generation. And that's why we need to recommit to the SDGs and make education a global political priority. And uh, I can tell you, my friends, that the EU is uh, taking a leadership on this. I have decided to increase funding to education in our external budget so that uh, in the next seven years, the European Union under my responsibility countries is uh, using uh, at least 10 of 10 percent of our external funding to education and i really of course uh, call on on governments to keep education funding high on the agenda and also the mainstream educational priorities throughout uh, the recovery initiatives, because we know that many countries, not only in Europe, but worldwide, are now preparing their, you know, recovery plans. So I think education needs to be at the heart of that recovery plan and, and agenda. Uh, so, of course, uh, we need to invest more, but we also need to invest better. So we have to work hand in hand through coordinated action. And this is important. So uh, I really think that, uh, especially at the country level, GPE, European Union, uh, World Bank, other international institutions, UN family and so forth, we need to work as a coordinated, coordinated manner. So I think that's the only way to really support the partner countries, uh, as, especially the uh, the least developed countries uh, and also achieve results. But the European Union is uh, showing a leadership and, and I'm very committed to this approach. Um, thank you, Yuta. Uh, I think you are right. Like We do need to invest more and um, invest better and work together because um, for, I mean, this is not going to be the only global crisis we're going mm -hmm. to experience as um, as a civilization, as, as a country. And I, as a, as a young person, I'm scared that with every new global pandemic or every new global issue, we are worrying that we're going to lose the gains that we've made in the past. And if that continues to be something that we're worried about, it means we really need to change our approach <laughs> to make sure, like, regardless of what crisis we're facing, we'll never have to worry that we're going to lose past gains like past games becomes this is what they are and like with new crisis we just try to make sure we move we continue to accelerate forward and not so much we're spending so much time worrying that we're going to lose all the gains that we've made in the past um, decades because that really shows that there is a fundamental problem with the current approach that we have um as you as you know uh, gp is asking world leaders and supporters to raise their hands to fund education through gpe because every change starts with a powerful act which can be uh, as simple as raising your hand in a classroom now i'm going to start with you jayatma would you tell us why you raise your hand for gpe please to add to what Yuta just mentioned, and I'm of really course. excited to hear that the, yeah. the European Union under her leadership is, um, in, in fact, increasing their contributions to education. Mm -hmm. And um, you and I, we live in this anxiety that every time <laughs> there is a disaster that, you know, funding for youth or funding for education or funding for youth-friendly services gets cut because that has been our lived reality um, as yeah. young people, what we have, we have seen and experienced. And for me, what the European Union is trying to do is 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 what is logical right now if you actually go in the cycle of saying okay because there is a crisis we are going to cut down education funding so when there is a next crisis we are actually having a generation of young people who are not equipped with the knowledge skills 
or the expertise that they need to be resilient and resourceful in the face of that crisis. So if we are serious about preventing or managing future crises, what we need to do is to invest in education so that we empower a generation of young people who are able to take care of themselves and their communities in the face of a future crisis. So for me, what's logical is not cutting funding for education when there is a crisis, but rather looking at ways of improving funding that goes into education so that so that we, we build that generation for them to be able to face uh, the challenges of the future on, on their own. So I'm raising my hand for education because I want world leaders to know if they decide not to allocate funding for education or if they decide to cut funding for education, we as young people see that as those leaders actively trying to jeopardize our future. So please invest in education. We are raising our hands. Thousands of young people are raising their hands. So many leaders are stepping up. Um, so I am calling on everyone watching us today to join this cause and all world leaders to take this responsibility seriously and help GPE raise the $5 billion that they need um, to, to embark on this strategic action to really um, empower a generation of young people who are able to realize their fullest potential. Thank you very much, um, Joyatma. <clears throat> uh, now, Yuta, would you um, tell us why you raised your hand um, for GPE? I'm definitely raising my hand for the um, education today. Mm -hmm. uh, also, I want to raise my hand for all the children to have the opportunity to build a better future filled with their dreams and ambitions. And I think, you know, through the education, access to quality education, we are providing opportunities to young children, uh, young people and children to really make their dreams come true. That's the purpose of life. You've, are, you've heard it from um, Commissioner Yuta, you've heard it from US, um, UN Yuta um, Envoy Jayatma for why they're raising their hand um, for, for, for education and just to reiterate what my dear friend Jabma just said, we should never think about cutting funding for education under no circumstances because education is the bedrock um, of progress of our civilization. And so I would like to thank you both for joining me today for this month's episode of Raise Your Hand Live. I would also like to thank everyone for tuning in. Remember, every change starts with a powerful act. You can join us and raise your hand to call on world leaders to fund education by visiting www.raiseyourhand.net. Now, back over to you, Commissioner, for a special announcement. Dear friends, I have some great news to share with you. In our discussion earlier, I raised my hand for education today for all children. I told you that I am committed to investing more in education. The European Commission walks the talk. We continue to support the Global Partnership for Education. As announced by President von der Leyen, we will increase our contribution to 100 million euros per year for a total of 700 million euros until 2027. Team Europe stands ready to lead global efforts to bring children back to school and learning. We welcome everyone to join us in these efforts.